ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Saturday, tea sippers. So I wanna come on here and talk about all this drama that went down last night. So if you guys do not know, I noticed an uptick and, you know, white media outlets and, you know, grown white men, you know, just, you know, crying tattoo tears, honey, on, on, on TikTok and Twitter and, you know, even the Instagram CEO, he was very upset. They're mad at censorship. They're upset by what Russia is doing. And, you know, a lot of people were feeding into this like, oh, that's so messed up. Russia is trying to censor their own people from Instagram and TikTok and this and that. But what a lot of people are not doing is their due diligence and their research on the topic. And it just goes to show you the hypocrisy of these social media giants. Like, let, let's keep it 100. So all week in Russia, U.S. corporations have been suspending operations. They've literally gone in, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, and many others have gone in and said, you know what? We no longer want our business here in Russia. We're leaving. And hundreds of Russians lost their jobs overnight. Because it was Russians that were manning the stores. They were the waiters and waitresses and baristas and things like that. So hundreds of these people who have really nothing to do with this conflict, they're just regular citizens, they lost their job, they lost their money overnight. So this is what's been going on all week. So let me go ahead and show you all this clip. The other Western countries shuddering in Russia right along with the Golden Arches. CBC's Valerie Castro tracking those. Hi, Val. Hi, Shep. This morning there were still a lot of holdouts, but the social pressure has continued to grow, and several companies have now announced they will stop doing business in Russia. A big one, Starbucks issued a statement suspending all business activity, including shipment of all Starbucks products. CEO Kevin Johnson adding our licensed partner has agreed to immediately pause store operations and will provide support to nearly 2,000 partners in Russia. General Electric will suspend operations with the exception of providing essential medical equipment and supporting existing power services to people in the region. And Coca-Cola also suspending business, adding our hearts are with the people who are enduring unconscionable effects from these tragic events in Ukraine. PepsiCo added themselves to the growing list shortly after that, suspending sales as well as promotional and advertising activities. Mounting pressure on social media came in the form of hashtags calling for customers to boycott various brands, Starbucks and McDonald's included. Retail experts say this forced companies to act now rather than wait for the social outcry to blow over. All right, so you guys have just seen that clip of the corporations leaving Russian droves, you know, per cancel culture. Okay, so fast forward to yesterday. Facebook, a.k.a. Meta, they decided to make an announcement basically stating that they are going to, you know, dumb down their terms of services and they're going to allow people in Ukraine and in other countries to basically promote acts of violence and threats towards Russian troops and the Russian president. So when this went viral, that people were allowed to do this, there was a lot of like Russian hate just going on all over Facebook, all over Instagram. I mean, regular citizens of Russia were also being attacked, not just the troops. OK, a lot of Russian xenophobia, quote unquote. And so once Vladimir Putin heard about this, he decided to take action. And he basically said, being that Facebook owns Instagram and WhatsApp, he is going to be banning all of those platforms from Russia come Monday. Now, we had announced last week that they were already planning on removing themselves from the global Internet on March 11th, which was yesterday. But they were going to allow certain apps to stay. Now he's saying flat out they're going to ban Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. And so the head of Instagram, his name is Adam Masuri, and basically he came out, Chad was in his feelings, was very upset about, you know, their app being banned from Russia, you know, was definitely upset. There was another white man whose videos were taken down off of TikTok, and he was definitely in his feelings as well. I want y'all to go ahead and watch this foolishness, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Russians just got TikTok to ban me from doing any live news reports on Ukraine in the future. 
Every night for the last two weeks, I have been doing an hour-long chat with folks summarizing the latest news on Ukraine, and it just got banned by TikTok. Let me show you what they sent me. I'm shrinking this small so you can see it. Look at this. This is clearly the rest is. My, my news updates on, I am literally updating on what is going on in the news and explaining why it matters. And now we were doing Q&A and people were asking questions, for example, about you know, the Russian war dead. Um, what are the Russians doing? That was, it, they literally shut me off when we were talking about the Russian war dead and why they weren't picking up the bodies because our US experts are saying they're leaving the bodies, right? Look at this. Your live assets was suspended for violating hateful behavior, attacking, threatening, inciting violence that dehumanizes an individual or group. What are they talking about? Uses or includes slurs, praises, for, glorifies or support. I mean, like, oh God. Folks, people were talking about this. TikTok is, is doing the bidding, and this is really bad, is doing the bidding of the Russians and, and I, well, their allies, the Chinese here. The Russian here. government has decided to block Instagram in Russia, cutting off millions of people from loved ones and friends around the world. We know that over 80% of people in Russia on Instagram follow an account from outside of Russia. The situation is terrifying and we're trying to do all that we can to help keep people safe. We've made encrypted chats available to everyone in Ukraine and Russia. And we've encouraged everyone in the region to make their accounts private and we've made it so that you cannot see who another account follows for safety reasons. We've also pledged $15 million to humanitarian efforts, and we've seen 750,000 people on the platform raise over $30 million for similar efforts. We've also created an information hub for people in the region, even if they move from country to country, to make sure they have access to good information and context. There's more information available in my link in bio, and if you're interested in donating, I encourage you to donate to Save the Children, International Rescue Committee, or CARE. All amazing organizations doing important things right now. With that, I sign off. This move by Meta, the big tech giant that owns Facebook, it certainly caused a stir. Their president for global affairs, Nick Clegg, has now confirmed in a statement that users in Ukraine will be allowed to express their anger against Russian invaders. Nick Clegg said that this was a temporary decision taken during unprecedented circumstances. And this certainly represents a change because previously, if you go onto Meta and Facebook policies, users, as you can see, are not allowed to post violent hate speech or support directed at any individual or group. And as you can imagine, this relaxing of the rules, well, it angered a lot of people in Moscow. The Russian embassy in the United States described this move as extremist activity. Meanwhile, the Russian communications watchdog has now since blocked Instagram, another of Meta's apps, while a criminal investigation is underway. Now, Meta have reiterated that this policy does not change any wider rules when it comes to hate speech. Users are still not allowed to post any angry content directed at Russia as a whole or Russian citizens. But there are still concerns within the United Nations that this policy means that in Ukraine, at least, users could still be descending into wider anti-Russian right, hate. So you guys just watch those video clips. Now, what I find very interesting about this situation is that so what's very interesting to me about all of this drama that's going on is it's the hypocrisy for me. As someone myself who has been shadow banned by Instagram, who have had posts removed, um, face from Facebook, Instagram, shadow banned on YouTube, I find it very rich that these same platforms who have banned people for lesser offenses are now in their feelings. Now, this is the same platform which a year ago, if you called C-19 the Wuhan virus, you are automatically banned. If you said that that virus was created in a lab, you were labeled a conspiracy theorist and your posts were removed. But then when it was convenient and the information came out that it was created in a lab in Wuhan, then it was okay. Now, what I find very interesting is that Facebook has a nerve to encourage their users to post violent messages towards Russia. I find it very funny that when it's convenient for these platforms, they're ready and willing to encourage hate speech. I have seen black people on TikTok literally removed and shadow banned for the littlest things unjustly, no explanation. I have seen hashtags like BLM, dark skin, and melanin suppressed in all algorithms, not just TikTok. Don't let them fool you. They're suppressed on Instagram and other apps as well. 
like I said before, me along with so many other people have had to create multiple accounts due to being shadow banned. I was literally unable to live stream on my Instagram account for almost a year simply for posting what was going on in my city during the George Floyd riots. So in my personal opinion, like I said on Instagram, I feel absolutely no ways about this nonsense. Not only do they treat black creators on social media like crap, but anybody who doesn't agree with their narrative, they're automatically silenced, shadow banned, and removed. This goes for truther channels. This also goes for conservatives. I may not agree with everything that conservatives say, but I do feel like they have the right to state their opinion, just like people who are not conservative. But we see how these social media apps play games. I don't feel bad for Instagram. The only reason why they're upset it's not because they care about the Russian people getting information and, you know, being able to contact their loved ones. Because one thing that, like I said in my live stream, when I went live um, in that live stream called about last night, I told you guys, Russia has been creating a buffer for the past eight years. They have their own Internet. So when they're ready to pull themselves off of the global Internet, they're going to be fine. Their peoples will still have access to the Internet to be able to use it in their own confines. Just like with China, Chinese people don't have access to all these same apps that we have access to. A lot of them use apps like WeChat because China is very restrictive. I find it very disingenuous that he's on Instagram, literally almost in tears about this. When I tell you them Russian people were lighting his ass up in his comment section. Now, I couldn't read a lot of it because a lot of it was in Russian, honey. But the ones I did find, they were lighting him up and they were holding him accountable. Like your app literally promoted xenophobia and allowed people to attack Russian people who have nothing to do with this war. You guys were cool with it. But now that we're banning your app, now it's an issue. And some of the biggest social media influencers in Russia were speaking out because this is going to affect them as well. You know, their livelihood, all of their posts from the past five to 10 years. Um, the one lady ended up having to make a Telegraph account. And within a few hours, she had a million followers and she was on there crying. You know, she's talking in Russian, so I can't understand anything she's saying. But I just find it very rich how. It was okay when all these American companies were pulling out of Russia and causing people who have nothing to do with the war, you know, these are just regular civilians, to lose their jobs. But now that Russia is pulling the same tactics, now it's an issue. I don't care about Russian people having access or not having access to Instagram. It makes me no difference because Instagram and Facebook are American apps. So until American people are able to get on these apps and state their opinions freely without being shadow banned, without being removed, without being punished, I'm not crying tattooed tears for another nation. I'm just not doing it. So I just find this very, very hypocritical that so many black people have lost their platforms. Even people in the LGBT have been silenced and lost their platforms. You know what I'm saying? And all of that is OK. But now we're crying because Russia is about to ban them. It's about money. Russia is a huge country big population. They love Instagram. They love American apps. So when you say that they're going to be pulled off of this app, he's not crying for the Russian people. He's crying because he's going to lose clicks, 
views and revenue that's generated by these people. See, it was funny when y'all were pulling physical businesses from Russia. It was okay because it didn't really affect the tech giants. But now that Russia's playing the same game and they're about to start banning all these tech giants from their country, now they're seeing that's a huge revenue stream that's about to be lost. And they're definitely hot and bothered, okay? Another thing that I find very interesting is that, like I said, I watch news from all over the world. Everything from we on, you know what I'm saying? We have whole streaming parties watching we on. And another news station that I like is RT News, Russia Today. Been watching them off and on for like the past five years. I always feel like they were fair, just like I watch Sky News in Australia. I watch a lot of other things besides CNN and Fox, okay? And YouTube had absolutely no problem banning RT News. So much so when you go to look up anything with RT News, they're still posting. But I no longer have access to it here in Minnesota. I no longer have access to see what they're talking about or to hear their side of the story or to just, you know, see what's going on on that side of the world. We no longer have access to RT News. When, when you, you click, click on it, it literally says video unavailable. This content is not available in this country's domain due to legal compliance. So if I don't see the games that are being played here and the censorship, it's really sad. It, it, you know, there's to me, there's no heroes in all of this. It's the regular people who are suffering because leaders want to play puppeteer, you know. But I just found it really rich yesterday that these same people who have banned so many other people here in America for a lot less are now in their feelings after they allowed Ukrainians and others to basically send death threats, wish death, you know, to, to talk to talk and post all forms of violence against a nation but when we were posting videos about SARS it was removed it was banned you were shadow banned for posting stuff that was going on in Nigeria about SARS when we were posting things about the riots in 2020 with George Floyd things were being pulled down as soon as they were being pulled up they were being pulled down by Facebook and Instagram so like I said, it's very funny that when it's something that they want to promote and push, they're willing to, you know, what I'm saying change the rules and regulations. But when it's something that they want to hide and ban and not promote, then they can come after you and say, well, you violated terms of services. I didn't know that terms of services could waver as needed, depending on the country and the situation. So this entire situation is very disturbing to me. It was bothering me and my homegirls, honey. So I felt like I needed to speak on it. It's upsetting me and my homegirl because we feel like, well, damn. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about all this mess. Are you guys sad because Russia is pulling their people from Instagram and Facebook? Or do you guys see the hypocrisy that I'm seeing that Instagram is upset and in their feelings, but yet and still they've done the same thing to countless Americans here? So let me know your thoughts. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, y'all, in the event you've been unsubscribed from my channel. Because you know they love shadow banning my content, honey. Also, make sure to share the video. Make sure you thumbs up. And thank you so much once again for the support. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.